What's up, Loop Fruit? Loopy Fist here. Uh, so Emperor Hulkling's coming out uh, this Tuesday, and I'm not going to be here because I got to go back home for some shenanigans and work-related stuff. But I just wanted to say I'm kind of on the fence where I think a lot of people are on the fence about Emperor Hulkling. He's not like some crazy sick car that does something that's fantastic and you have to get. So a lot of people are asking like, should I get him or should I not get him? You know, do I even want to use keys? I am going to save that for after the video, but we did on stream today, we did go over like different things that I think uh, Hulkling will have synergy with. Now we had a lot of arguing on the stream and like different decisions and whatnot. I do want to specify that these cards, um, he, he can be any six drop in the beginning of the game, basically. Um, I do want to specify that the way that we carry, we categorize this is pretty much based on not deck build or, you know, what's going on. It's like, if you have this ability from this card, would you be happy with it? That is all it, it has nothing to do with, oh yeah, he's going to be great with this and that. Cause you can't really build him around that. He's not like iron lad where, you know, the things that he's going to hit in your deck. It's, it's like imagining your deck is full of six drop cards and you don't know which one iron lad's going to hit. And you can't even specify based off of the cards you've pulled. That's how Hulkling is. So you don't want to specify based off of the deck. You're going to put him in. You want to specify off the ability that he's going to be using. People weren't getting that in my chat. Nothing I can do about that, except hope that you guys can understand. So here I have a list and I've already cat cat characterized these. Man, I can't talk today. Um, I've already cat categorized these, damn. Um, and I'm just gonna go over each one and we are going to um, kind of discuss very quickly on each one. Um, I'm gonna try to hit this very quickly. I don't want this video to be super long. So here we go. First off, we got Magneto. Uh, I originally thought that Magneto would be a bad hit. Um, and the reason why is because I was thinking, oh man, he's a 6'11". Why would you want Magneto? But I, I, I have to, I'm, I'm going to slap myself on the wrist like I was slapping my chat on the wrist. This is if you put Emperor Hulkling into your deck and you get this ability, I would be happy getting Magneto's ability. I'm not going to be upset with that. Um, and most of the time it can be, it can, it can have some shock factor to it. I think that even though it's a slightly weaker Magneto, it's still getting Magneto in your deck and you're, and you're in your hand and you're happy that you have it because you, you, it could have been something worse and we'll get to those worst cards later. Now, Ultron, Ultron is a good, good one as well. Ultron being, um, being basically a better doom right now is fantastic for the most part, you know? Um, and then not only that, you're going to be adding 11 power to the lane you play Emperor Hulkling into. So it's still really good. And that's, that's where you're going to see a lot of these cars with the lower level power. They're going to be very good because they're they're They have that lower power threshold because they are, so they have good abilities. Uh, null is one of those sleeper hits. Um, I was telling my chat, I was like, yo, so here's the thing. If you have a six eleven null, it's good, but doesn't mean that somebody's destroyed anything. You just have a 611. It could be neutral, but for the most part, if somebody's destroying things, it's gonna be good. Um, you just have to know if they're gonna be destroying things or not, or I guess you don't know. But if you get it and they are, that's great. If not, it's whatever. But there will be some games where you will get that and they'll be destroying, but those are gonna be very few, very far and few probably. I know a lot of people play destroy, but what are the odds of you playing Hulkling and then somebody plays destroy and you get null? That's a lot of what ifs, right? And this ain't no Marvel Cinematic Universe, so. Everything ain't gonna be happening like that. Blob, on the other hand, if you get him, he's always great. As long as you have something to feed him in the fridge, uh, AKA your deck, because he is gonna be hungry. Um, cool thing is that he will gain the plus 13 and then go over. So if you get something like an infinite, you got a 23 power blob if that's all he hit. If he hits some other things, it's just whatever he hits until that last card gets him over the 13 plus energy. I mean, power. So that can be a pretty good hit as well. Alive, great hit. He's a 611 surprise factor. Elias is already surprised. You can put him in any deck really. And as long as you have priority on the last turn, you can just lay him down. Even now with him being a 610, he's in a whole different little, um, you know, area than uh, pre pre um, nerf alive. 
where he would destroy things now he's just a big boy so you can still drop him down and use him as power so he's not a useless card when you don't have priority which i think is a really cool thing about Goliath. and now if he's the emperor hulk in Goliath, he's gonna have a slightly little bit of power increase just one point of power but hey that one point could save you the game i've lost plenty of games to one power mockingbird a lot of people in my chat was saying you can't put mockingbird in there and say she's a good card because no 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 you won't be playing i'm like look here here's the thing Mockingbird has a great ability. That doesn't mean that I am going to be using it every single time. You don't want, like, like I said earlier, when we were talking about Magneto and all these other cards, you don't, We this list right here is based off, if you have that ability on Emperor Hulkling, deck, not even thinking about the fucking deck, would it be a good ability? Mockingbird is a good ability and you get a little bit of extra power with Hulkling. So yes, it is a good card. It's good to have, it's a good ability to have. Um, Red Hulk, obviously gonna be good. Slightly more power on Hulkling, and obviously just like Red Hulk, you have to pull it. But once you get it, it's not even depending on what you do, it's depending on what your opponent does. If your opponent is not using up all their energy, um, if they're not doing speed tactics, then you're gonna be getting extra power on your Emperor Hulkling. That's all you gotta do. Very simple, very good hit, you wanna see it. Sasquatch, same thing, even better than some of the other cards we've mentioned before, because with Sasquatch, you don't have to worry about um, anything else besides what you played on the last turn. Now, if you're playing a very uh, tempo heavy deck and you're using up all of your energy on certain cards every single turn, you know, you're playing Electro and then you're playing, you know, your four drop and then your five drop, then it's not gonna be that big of a deal with Sasquatch, but at least you can get a discount on Emperor Hulkling just by one point, because if you play one card on turn five, then you're gonna get a discount on that and make it a 511, which is still better than nothing, right? She-Hulk, if you get the card in your hand, you notice it and you wanna take advantage of that, it's a great ability. She-Hulk is a fantastic ability. And just like a lot of these other cards over here, Hulkling is gonna be an improvement because you're gonna have a 11 power She-Hulk instead of a 10. Um, nothing really to be like, yo, um, I, I'm shooting for She-Hulk, but if you get it, you're not gonna be upset about it. Odin, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lump Odin and Onslaught into like the same kind of like framework because they're very similar cards, but Odin and Onslaught, if you get them, it's great. I will say Odin's probably a little bit better because there are more on reveal cards in the game than ongoing. But at the same time, I do believe that um, Onslaught can be great too if you get him and you have a ongoing type build going on on the board. Um, especially when Onslaught Citadel or Kamortage, these can be fantastic. Uh, Galactus, I think Galactus would be pretty gnarly, especially if you can get him early on um, and maybe put a put a uh, wave down or something, or even late. Uh, I was telling my chat, I was like, yo, you can actually wait until the last turn and hope your opponent hasn't had it. You know, give them false hope on that um, on that lane that has like seven or eight power and them saying you, you will never be able to beat me over here now. What could you possibly do? Play a 611 Galactus? Well, fuck yeah, I can. And there you go. You slam that baby down and there you go. You take the game and that's awesome. It's fantastic. You know, Dr. Doom's gonna be um, mega if you get that hit. Um, and that's just good because the thing about Ultron is that you do have to save space for those um, those bots to actually uh, do some damage. And also if you do have, you know, a, um, if you have a, a Patriot down. I don't know why you'd be playing Patriot in this deck, but if you do, then that's a good thing too. But with the Doom, you can just add five power and you don't have to worry too much about space um, saving tendencies. They just fit into one little slot. So it's five energy, I mean five power on each lane. Typically that's 15 power total. But in this case, it's gonna be a total of, um, it's gonna be 21 power total. That's a lot, that's a big, that's a big difference. That's six extra power that you're not gonna have on a typical Doom. Arnim Zola, I think that he's very situational, but the fact that you're gonna be able to leave um, an 11 power card in a lane where you, that you do Arnim Zola, that's huge. A lot of people were saying in my chat that they think Arnim Zola is a bad hit. And I say, I don't think so. Because the thing about Arnim Zola is that typically you're hoping that um, you're, you're hitting something big and pushing that power to other lanes and you're sacrificing that lane you're playing him on. But in this case, totally different thing. Arnim Zola is gonna be laying down some heavy power somewhere and then pushing power, which basically takes that that um, that bad angle that he has and just compensates for it, which is fantastic. Leader, obviously why he'd be good. Uh, leader used to be, um, 
one of the most broken cards in the game. Um, and in this case, leader is just, he just had, he's, you're hoping you're winning the lane you're playing him on and wherever their opponent's going to play, you're going to be able to win that lane too, by laying him down. Um, and in this case, you're going to be dropping down a six eleven leader. So you can, you can kind of decide on where you want to play that and have a little bit more of an advantage, which is really cool. Heimdall, I think is going to be secret, secret OP. Um, we've all seen the Heimdall decks. I know I have my Gene and Jukes deck that uses Heimdall. I know Binks has his Hog C. Um, you know, just uh, good cards and um, and uh, <laughs> and Heimdall, and I, I love it. Um, when Heimdall is in a deck that you don't expect, that's when he's powerful. You know what you're thinking of when you see move cards. You're thinking Heimdall, but when you don't see move cards, you're probably never thinking Heimdall. So when you can slam a 611 Heimdall down in the right lane, win that lane, and then push everything else over to the left and just win that lane as well with an unexpected increase in power, you can dodge Shang-Chi's, you can dodge Shadow Kings, you can you can just dodge a lot. You can do, you're not alive, but you can dodge tons of things. It is, it is tremendously unpredictable for somebody to have Heimdall as a random deck. So I think Heimdall is also a fantastic card to throw in there. Um, Spectrum could be very good. I don't think she's like on the higher side of the list, but if you are playing an ongoing deck, then, and you do end up getting, you know, Spectrum, it's not gonna be a bad card because you're still gonna have 611 and you can still just dump some power to some of the ongoing cards. Not all cards in Marvel Snap are ongoing. There's not very many, but if you do have a deck that has a few, it could be added benefit, even if it's just something like Ravona Renslayer. You know, instead of it being a 2-2, two, two, now you got a 2-4 Ravona and you drop down 611 on another lane. That's a very cool thing to have. Um, I added Scar and Orca over to the right and they're big. Why are they big? They're closer to the neutral hits. Um, Scar is really the Scar and, and Emperor Hulkling. They're basically the same power level. Nothing really crazy about that. Besides, you're going to be getting a discount on it if you have bigger cards out. The only problem with that is that you have to have those bigger cards in order to, to reduce that. So that's why I say it's not like a super crazy hit. It's close to being neutral because you're not going to be able to take advantage of it very often. Um, whereas with I know a similar card like She-Hulk or Sasquatch, you have more control over that, right? So if you have that, you can do it a little bit easier. Orca is is a good hit. But the thing about it is that because you can't see what Imp Hulkling is before you pull him, you have to think about the fact that I'm gonna have to keep a lane open. But if you don't keep a lane open, there's no harm. You just won't be able to take advantage of Orca's ability, which is, you know, gaining the extra power when he's isolated in that lane. So moving on, those are all the good hits that I that I came up with. If you agree with those good hits, let me know in the chat, you know, drop a comment, let me know. Um, I really appreciate it if you guys could do that for me because we had a lot of conversations about this in the, uh, in the uh, in the Twitch chat. And if you wanna participate in the Twitch chat when I do stuff like this, twitch.tv slash loopyfist, uh, you can hit us up, come give me a follow. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, so moving on over to the neutral hits, we got Hulk. Reason why he's in there, obviously he's a text-based card, not gonna be uh, any benefit. And also, um, we know there's a power difference right there. So it's not even, if you wanna take into, into account the power difference in something like this, I don't think it's a big difference, um, but, but yeah, that's that's really it. You know, it's, it's one power, but whatever. Helicarrier, unless you're playing discard, which I could see people doing Emperor Hulkling and discard, you're not gonna get a, get a good benefit from Helicarrier. So it's not really good, not really bad. It's just Helicarrier, you know? Living Tribunal, I put as a neutral hit. So here's the thing. Um, 11 is not divisible by three. You're gonna have two left over. And because of that, that is not going to round up. It's going to round down actually. So you're still going to technically have the same amount of power as living tribunal because of his ongoing ability. So you're not really going to have anything different than anything. If anything, I could probably move living tribunal into the bad hits because if you do, it's, it's only three power per lane. Um, and if you're, if you're playing a, uh, if you're playing a variation of a deck that is not very sp spreading, out or very tall to where you can spread that power out, then you're gonna have some issues running into getting Hulkling uh, Living Tribunal. Apocalypse, same thing with Helicarrier, nothing really there to gain. Um, it's really just gonna be coming down, are you playing a discard deck or are you not? If you are, then great. You can have some, um, you can have an early start on Apocalypse and um, that's, that's gonna be really good for you. But how often is that gonna happen? If you look at this board, you notice all these six drops, not very likely to happen. So 
Um, Hella, same deal. Are you playing discard? If you're not playing discard, it's a very specific archetype. Um, and that's why Hella Carrier, Apocalypse, and Hella just don't really, they're not really gonna work that well with Hulkling. Um, having a 611 Hella would be great, but it's not gonna really do anything for you. Especially with the nerf that Hella took months back where she gives minus two to every car that gets brought back. It's just not that worth it, you know? Um, so that's cool. Um, Thanos, if this works the way that I believe it is gonna work, if because it won't happen at the start of the game and show you and do all that jazz and whatnot, you're not gonna know that the stone, you, can't, you won't even have any stones in your deck. Thanos will just be a 611. That's it. So maybe you can put Emperor Hulkling in a Thanos deck and maybe Thanos would get buffed. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe he would get buffed by some of the stones. I don't know if, if, that, if there's a lot of ifs and, and, and if this happens and things like that to think about. So I would never go for that. But those are the neutral hits. Not very many of them. You got a good buffer in between the good and the bad hits, which, which we'll get into into a second. But I think that overall he's not a terrible card but i don't see a reason to really get him for the benefits he's more of a meme car if you ask me um and now let's go into the bad hits so i can kind of explain those real quick infinite you don't want he has a stipulation on him and also the reason you play infinite is for one thing that big ass dump trunk of a power level that he has he has 620 so he's a six cost 20 power card he is the biggest card um with default energy so that's why you play infinite that's why he has such a downside of having to skip a turn people like to say that he's a six cost card he's more like an 11 20 he's because you have to skip turn five just to play him right um or he's a project pegasus turn one card you know what i mean so if i have a 611 infinite that i have to skip a turn to play that's not really cool that's not that's not what i'm here for you know um same thing with giganto only being able to play him in the left lane, that's cool and all, but if I really wanted to have a stipulation like that, then I would probably just end up playing Giganto. Um, and there's no reason to have the Emperor Hulkling with that. Um, because you, it, it's a lower level um, card. It's, it's, I mean, it's not, it doesn't have as much inner, uh, power. And also I'm gonna be forced to play it in the left lane. I don't want that. You don't want that with Emperor Hulkling. You want something else. Agatha Harkness is gonna ruin a lot of people's lives uh, when they pull her um, after they snap and it's Emperor Hulkling as Agatha Harkness, it's gonna suck. Uh, not only is she probably not gonna be able to play herself because you're not gonna have the ramp to get rid of her, um, she's also not gonna have the power that you enjoy, which is three plus power over Emperor Hulkling at a 614. So you gotta take that into consideration as well. Uh, last but not least, we got Destroyer up here. And obviously why Destroyer is kind of similar to Infinite and Giganto in the sense that he has a bad ability that you can use for for good you know i just played a nimrod deck not too long ago and i had destroyer in there because he's awesome in that kind of in that kind of um environment but in this environment where you are probably not going to be playing destroy you're going to end up with a 611 paperweight that you don't want to play because it's going to ruin your board now there could be some instances where it's a good thing to have a 611 maybe you want to destroy some stuff on your side of the field but for the most part that's not going to be true um, and that is why he is a bad hit. You're gonna be put into a position where you can't play these cards or you don't want to play these cards. If that makes a lot of sense. So, um... Oh, I know you guys are still here. Well, while you're sticking around, be sure to subscribe and also check out this video. See you guys in later. Bye.